one of them. Bats go fishing. Bats fishing across the nation. Bats go fishing around the world. Facts of Fishing, the show, presented by Subway. Eat fresh. Shimano, technology you can feel. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Live target lures. And Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. This week our hero will try to drop the hammer on some scrappy smallmouth using a soft plastic jerk bait. If you ask me, that's nothing new. I have to watch a jerk on this show every week. <laughs> Without further ado, here he is. I can't say this. Just read the script. The world's greatest angler, Dave Mercer. You know, one of the things I hear all the time is, do fish bite better in the rain or in the overcast? And my answer to that is absolutely positively no. I mean, I don't think they do. They just act different. I think that whole fishing in the rain thing is kind of like, you know, rumors get started weird ways or traditions, you know. Um, some people will tell you, it's good luck if it rains in your wedding day. Uh, it's good luck to get pooped on by a seagull. Well, no, that's not good luck. I don't care. Whenever you're getting pooped on in life, it's never good luck. And fishing is not better in the rain. Just somebody made that up somewhere along the way. But one thing that is different, when you get an overcast day like today, fish move around a lot more. When it's super sunny, you find they're locked to structure. So you gotta throw slow moving baits. When it's overcast and gloomy like this, they get the roam on and you can throw faster moving baits. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. And hopefully, that's good luck. start the morning they just cannot say no to that little shad style bait it's the most unassuming natural gliding action and it drives them crazy not a giant but I'll take them get out of here here's a lot of fast moving baits that'll make fish go crazy but this deal here is you know a lot of times I'll just glide it along and, and that's kind of how I categorize it it's basically just a glide bait. So I'll fire that bait out there, let it sink a couple inches, and one of the keys is slack in your line. I'll leave a lot of slack in my line and just pop it like this. I won't super aggressively work it. Every once in a while I'll give it a doom, 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 quick pop. But those smallies, they're opportunistic and they're curious. I mean, a smallie's a lot like a cat and a large mouth is like a big dog. You know, the large mouth just sort of sits there with the smallies. You know, you move anything just like a cat at home. Doom, doom chases in to see what it is and uh, by popping that bait and then it just slowly glides I mean they look at it and it's like they get mesmerized now they have no choice but to eat it <laughs> smoked it <laughs> that little caffeine chad is swimming along and they can't resist themselves. An overcast day like this, everybody likes to stay, you know, on the dock and drink coffee on an overcast day. But these smallies are enjoying eating the caffeine. Oh, he did. They need, oh, he did. I hit him. There he is. I missed him once, but he came back. I should have waited a little longer for him to come back so he could grow. Chill out. See you later. 
The whole reason it's so important to have all that slack in your line when you're working this bait is it basically just allows the bait to have a very wide walk the dog action under the water. If you don't have slack in your line, I mean, it'll still walk. I mean, it's gonna sort of kind of do one of these. Do, 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 do. But where I think it really triggers the strikes is with the slack in your line, you'll see it go boom, boom. It's a very wide, more of a gliding action than a walk the dog action. And in my experience, it drives fish crazy. There he is, I got him. Another one. Oh, dude. Mm, come here, you dirty little nasty beast. Oh. You raised, mm. you cleaned the caffeine shab. Look at that dude. Mm. Came up and smoked that thing. See ya. Do yourself a favor. Don't let the fish see that guy's picture. He scares them. Just pop, pop, let it glide. When it's gliding, it's just falling in front of those fish and it drives them crazy. Pop, pop, big slack in your line. Just pop, pop, and then let it glide. On that pause, really watch your line. This is one technique where braided line is your best friend. Because with traditional fishing lines like monofilament, even fluorocarbon, you're not gonna feel that hit. Because they're hitting a lot of times when there's a ton of slack in your line. And that braid with zero stretch, you're gonna feel that thunk. And that's that bad boy sucking that bait right into his yap. If you feel a second thunk, generally, that's the fish spitting it out. That's not the good one. Got. I'm just signing up for some casting lessons. That's a sweet spot right there. There we go. Big one. Big fish. <laughs> I'm gonna net this dude. Come here. I got gotcha. you. Mm. Hook in the perfect spot right in the top of his head. And we will see you later. Get in there and grow for me. Re-rig that bait and get another. This bait basically imitates an injured or dying bait fish. And if you can imagine, you know, I'm sure you've seen a perch or some sort of bait fish along the surface in its final hours and you see it do the, you know, kick and it'll just sit and then kick and just sit. And that's basically what a caffeine chat is. So think of that when you're working that bait. Boom, 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 pop it and then let it sit. I'm dying. I'm not long for this world. Please don't eat me. Mm. I got it. Come here, dude. Oh. <laughs> that right there. Mm, that's a good one. Mm, come here, buddy. I you were through. You are now. Mm. Look at the size of that mule. Oh, that tantalizing little caffeine shad came along. Oh, and yet again. Another big small. Oh, ouch. Another big smallie could not say no. Unbelievable, what a beast. Closed captioning for Facts of Fishing, the show, has been provided by BoatSmart Canada. Get your Pleasure Craft Operator card online at BoatSmartExam.com.
There we go. Oh. One of the things I love about soft plastic jerk baits is they're super forgiving. And what I mean by that is they let a guy like me make mistakes. The thing that's nice about them is they feel real. So when a fish grabs them, they'll hold on for a long time. A lot of times what you feel is just that thunk, and that's that fish sucking it in. And then if you watch your line, your line starts to move. Reel that line in and set the hook. The other good thing is if I don't set the hook, if I miss the fish, mm. chance are it's gonna fight again. And if I'm sleeping at the wheel, you can still catch them with it. Like that. Exact same thing happened right after. Are you kidding me? Oh, dude, that thing just jumped two feet in the air. Are you kidding me? I'm explaining it. And while I'm talking, I'm like, this can't be happening. I feel funk. I look, my line is just doing the slow, steady saunter. Mm. Gotta love it when a fish proves your point. Man, oh man, come here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Man, I'm gonna get the net on this dude. You know, when you're netting a fish, whoa, 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 one of the mistakes people make is they stab at that fish a lot. What I'll do is I'll keep my net, you know, up and out of the area. There's no way that that net is gonna mess with things right now while I'm playing that fish out. I've got the net away from the action. And when I figure that fish is ready, I can just bring it down and I'm not gonna stab at it. I'm just gonna place that net in the water, drag the fish in like that, and simply scoop. You will never make mistakes with your net if you do that. But when people get all excited, they see that giant fish, they start stabbing at it, that's when you knock fish off. So relax, remain calm, find your happy place. And if you're not happy doing this, you can never be happy. And one thing I'm finding out, the more of these I catch, the happier I am. Oh, let's let him go. Get out of here. I wanna show you a couple keys that I think really are gonna help you find success with throwing a soft plastic jerk bait. First of all, throw a good quality jerk bait like this caffeine chat. Second of all, you want a super sharp hook. I use a, I'm right now I'm using a 5 odd Trocar TK100. And the reason I use Trocars, you hear me talk about them all the time, is they're the world's sharpest hook. So it really makes sense to me that if you're gonna use a hook, use the world's sharpest hook. And the whole theory behind these basically reinvented the standard that hooks are held to. It's a three-sided sharpening, it's a trobar. So basically, the same thing that they use in suturing, you know, when they're doing cosmetic surgery. Not that I've had any, but if I were to ever get any, they would use that on a needle to suture. So super, super sharp hook. And the reason you use sharp hook is because a lot of times I'm long bombing this bait. I'm casting it far from the boat. So I really, really need a hook that I can drive home. Also, you want to pair that bait and hook with some line that you know is going to get the job done. Basically, throwing Power Pro, super slick. It's got no stretch, so in that long cast, Feel that little thunk reel up on them, and it's go time. There we go. Unbelievable, what a beast. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The thing came at it like a wolverine. I don't think I stuck him, though. I don't think I stuck him. There he is. He didn't think I stuck him either. Oh. It just goes to prove you over and over again. Oh, that's a good one too. Oh, 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 easy. Over and over again, you learn that. And sometimes, you know, I, I forget about it myself, but basically, you miss a fish, throw back in there. I can't count the number of fish Oh, easy, easy, easy. That I have caught after I missed them, even if you have them on for a split second. That fish doesn't know. Oh, relax. What happened? Oh, look at him. Unka. Little Trocar TK100. 
right in his yap. Oof. So like I was saying, when you miss a fish, whether you have it on for a split second or it just rolls on your bait and you don't hook it, always, always, always throw back there. We give these things way more credit than they're due. I mean, I love fish, but their brain is the size of a pinky nail. They don't know that, hey, Dave Mercer just missed me with his caffeine shad. All they know is I tried to eat a shad and it got away and I wanna get it. So always throw back. Better yet, if you're out with a buddy, Get him to throw while you're cranking that bait in because the quicker you can do it, the more effective it's going to be. Awesome, awesome fish. I'm very thankful for second chances with this dude. See you later. Mm. I love fishing soft plastic jerk baits. Little neat trick you can do when fishing this style of bait is technique called skipping where your bait goes across the surface. A lot of times people use that to fish under trees or boat docks and that sort of thing. I'll cast my bait a lot by skipping it when I'm fishing this style of bait because remember what you're imitating, a dying or injured bait fish. And a lot of times you'll see them struggling on the surface or after a school of bait fish have been attacked by a predator fish, when they're getting attacked, you'll see the on the surface and the predator fish come along looking for some scraps. Once they see that bait skipping across the surface, that gets their attention and they have to eat it. Oh, I had him, I had him. There we go. Easy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh man, look at this beast. Come here, dude. That dude right there did not want to give up. Awesome, awesome fish. I skipped that little caffeine shad, and I guarantee you, a lot of times that'll get these fish's attention. You know, they'll see that on the surface, their head turns, they see it, they gotta eat it. See you later. The other cool thing about skipping that bait around is not only is that little skipping action gonna trigger some strikes, but this is a perfect way to get really good at skipping. I mean, sure, you're not throwing this bait under docks, although you can, but I'm not here today. But in the open water, with skipping that bait, you'll get a lot more confidence and become really good at it. So that when you need to skip, whether it be with this bait or tube jig or anything, you're ready to go. There we go. Oh, yeah. Easy. Oh, what an absolutely insane old day. This overcast skies obviously just made these fish feel comfortable enough to get out there and do a little munching. Come here, dude. I gotcha. And that's right. I'm not afraid to crack off a Costanza pose. On a day like today, there is. I mean, I kind of feel like George Costanza. Life is good. I need a calendar or something. Evidently, the fishing is pretty good at La Reserve Beauchene because even Dave can catch fish there. If you want a fishing trip of a lifetime, contact La Reserve Beauchene at Beauchene.com. Mm, I missed them. One of the things with these baits is you want to rig them as straight as possible. The straighter you can rig them, the better you're going to be able to work them. If they've got a big bend in them, they're not going to swim right. So take that little extra time, rig it up straight, and throw you a soft plastic jerk bait. Mm. 
Oh, good one, too. <laughs> Dude, don't go jumping in the boat. Look at the size of that mule. Come here, dude. Come here. I thought I had you whooped. Oh, I got ya. Whew. Man, oh man. Fish after fish oh, on a caffeine shad. Soft plastic jerk baits is one of the easiest but most lethal techniques there is out there. I mean, it seems like you're not covering any water, but if you look at your GPS at the end of the day, you'll have had your bait in front of a ton of fish and caught a ton. It's just gradually popping along super slow. And these dudes right here, they can't say no. You know you're having a good day when your thumb looks like that. Fish after fish on the caffeine shad. Awesome. This week we learned if a jerk fishes with a jerk bait, good things happen. Dave only fished for 1 hour and 57 minutes, made 243 casts, and that resulted in an outstanding 11 fish. Not bad for a couple of jerks. And that's the score. Every one of today's fish ate a Strike King caffeine shad rigged on a super sharp Trocar TK100 hook. Dave chose a 6 foot 10 medium heavy Shimano Crucial jerkbait rod paired with a Shimano Stratic 3000 spooled up with 15 pound Aqua Green Power Pro Super Slick braided line. Now you've got the facts. <laughs> well, another episode of Facts of Fishing is over, but unfortunately the embarrassment of being outsmarted by Dave will last forever for these fish.